Yes. Right, that's us all going. Okay. That's um, it. Hello. We are back and carrying on our series in the Women of the Bible. We've got a lovely Giselle and Gum and I, and we have got Danny, Sharon, Amber, and I'm sure lots others on playback. So we're just going to carry on with our study guide for the women in the Bible. Um, so if you have got a copy, feel free to follow along. Um, and then we'll just have a bit of a, of a discussion as we normally do. So we are at on the letter H and we are Herodias and her daughter. I think we were having a bit of a conversation about how you pronounce this and we've gone with Herodias. Um, but you, she could be Herodias and I'm sure that would still be okay. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you, G. I said I'm listening to pronunciation and it is Herodias. Herodias. You're right. I was hearing, I was listening as well. Oh, Herodias. Were you? Herodias, there we go. Herodias, so, there her you go. Road, the road that you drive on, Gia. Mm -hmm. That's day for exactly. Spanish. Herodias. 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 Yes. Herodias, okay. Herodio. <laughs> you, you, you heard it here via. Herod you heard it here via Google. <laughs> Herod Herodias. Um, Herodias. Okay. Yeah. So we've got her scripture references as Matthew fourteen one to. 12 and mark chapter 6 14 to 29 and it says here their role in scripture herodias had married philip and then his brother king herod antipas john the baptist preached against this marriage which was incestuous according to the old testament law herod had john imprisoned but he was afraid to execute the popular prophet herod feared john himself knowing that he was just uh, he was a just and holy man that's mark 620 herodias however was incensed that john had publicly condemned her and she held it against him and wanted to kill him that's a scripture reference mark 1619 her chance came when herodias's daughter danced at the at a feast herod gave and the king effusively told the young woman to name her own reward when she looked to her mother for advice Herodias told her to ask for John the Baptist's head certainly Herodias was a grasping and self-centered woman she abandoned Philip to marry the more important Herod even though she knew this was condemned in God's law when John preached against the marriage her pride generated murderous intent she did not hesitate for a moment to involve her own daughter in what was nothing less than the murder of a godly man. Hard, harsh, brittle and hardened, Herodias cared for nothing but revenge. She won her revenge, but sacred history has marked her as the New Testament's counterpart of the Old Testament's de detested Jezebel. Examples for today. John the Baptist had spoken out against Herod's decision to wed his brother's wife, which was contrary to God's law. While Herod seems to have been shaken by John's preaching, Herodias became furious. She knew that what she had done was wrong, but when confronted, she refused to admit and correct her fault. Anger at others is often a sign of hardness in our own hearts. A warning we need to heed. Herodias' response to godly counsel was to retaliate against the counsellor. Her anger led her to a far greater sin as she conspired to end John's life. If we harden our hearts, we make ourselves vulnerable to far greater sins. She's, she's a character, isn't she, Herodias? Wow. Big time. Yes, definitely. I can actually picture her because you know like you've seen all these films right you've seen her portrayed in films I have a picture building mm -hmm. in my head but you know what I was looking I'd never really well of course I, I kind of looked at 
her marriage to her husband's brother. I always just saw it like, okay, this is a wrong thing. But I'd never really thought about it as incestuous, mm. according to Old Testament law. What's mm. the reference for that, guys? Probably being Deuteronomy, wasn't it? But, I mean, even just the fact that she's... I never really thought of drawing her as a parallel with Jezebel. You haven't heard enough African preachers then. <laughs> Like I never thought about her in that. Like clearly, she's one of the most, I won't say hated, but one of the most controversial or quote unquote bad women in the New Testament. You don't get a lot of them. Mm -hmm. She's probably one of the ones that is up up there. I, but I never really thought of drawing her parallel to to Jezebel. But she is a a, a wicked woman, really. To put it very, very wicked. Yes, very. And like, the, the, the thing is, true to form with me, in just that story that you read about her, mm -hmm. there are brilliant points. You know, there's adultery because she was with her brother, her husband's brother. Mm -hmm. she exactly. Has her, she has her motivation for getting rid of John the Baptist. She. So did, did sorry did her hus did her husband die or did she just div did she just divorce him and decide to marry? I think she. I think she left him. If she he had died, it wouldn't, be a, it wouldn't have been a problem right. because you had never yeah. read marriages. Yeah. So that's it. if he died, it wouldn't have been a problem. And then she finds that she feels that, I think she feels that John the Baptist is a threat. So she has to get rid of him. She's got fear. She's got confusion. She's got temptation, manipulation. She's got a plot. Mm -hmm. There's promises. And she had a choice. It's all what you find from this woman in this, and you know, each one of those points is a whole blinking sermon. In each one of those points, mm. Sharon will oh, be glad absolutely. to. Sharon will be glad to hear that. So she will. I might do a sermon in all of these mm. sometime, but you know, it really mm. shows. It really shows that she really was a very proud, manipulative, arrogant, mm. and how she used her daughter. She used someone else. She manipulated her daughter. Oh, that's the worst part. Yeah, to get her, to get her what she wanted. Yeah. Yeah, isn't mm. it? And that is the worst part, when we use somebody else for our gain. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> that's the classic. And I think that's why she's, they draw parallels between her and Jezebel. Because yeah. Jezebel was clearly a manipulator, you know. Mm. She never did any, well, a lot of the time she did more damage from behind the scenes. Yes. Mm. than she did right before people's eyes. So, like, she probably maybe just sat quietly when John the Baptist was saying what he was saying, but things were going through her mind, right? Mm. And, you know, clearly, this okay, Jezebel mainly used her husband, but she used a child. I mean, not a small child, a young girl. But even so, as a mother, it's a shame that she was such an example because clearly her daughter was looking to her for advice. Yeah. She must have respected her mother. Yeah. But then, you know, believing what her mother would say, as any child would think that their parents have the best ideas, mm. unfortunately, she let her daughter down the path of murder. Mm. So, yeah, I think, I think you know, if, what, what would you say is like her biggest... She has a lot of issues going on. Oh, <laughs> she has a lot one. of issues going on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what would you say? Because when I, when I was to read the the chapter for me I think her pride is sort of what kicks it off and like her her ambition and her pride I think are, are sort of and those are not things that are far away from us in this mm. day and age you know ambition and pride because she's obviously married in her eyes she's married the wrong brother and then mm -hmm. she leaves him because she wants presumably she wants status that comes with being Herod's wife um she leaves him and probably, who knows, maybe uses her womanly wiles to get away with Herod, mm -hmm. not to be completely innocent in the whole situation, taking on his brother's wife. But she obviously finds her way to Herod one way or another. So her ambition obviously causes her to sin against God and, and commit adultery, really. Um, yeah. But her pride because then when she's given godly counsel she doesn't want to hear it her heart is so hardened that she thinks 
she's above that or she doesn't want to be reproached she doesn't want and that's not that far away from from us in this day and age you know how many Mm -hmm. many are so ambitious and we're constantly seeking the next thing or what we perceive to be the next best thing um Mm -hmm. and then sometimes when we are angry or bitter or um, we're sinning even and, and somebody tries to tell us that our behavior, our heart posture is against God. We kind of take that to heart sometimes. I'm like, who are you to tell me what to do? Or you kind of feel justified in the way you're feeling because, like, I think she almost felt justified in her anger because she felt like John the Baptist had reproached her. Yeah. I think also because the way they said it, perhaps because he also did it so publicly. You know, yeah. she felt embarrassed. But that's what people do, though. Like, like you hear sometimes people when people are called out, they then they call the other person like a busybody. It's like it's a real. I can see it happening in real life. Like, yeah, see it playing out, and obviously different language, and maybe not a strong language used as, mm-hmm. as used here. But you can see, maybe, maybe, um, maybe you get angry with a friend, and then mm-hmm. somebody in the church is trying to. Are you angry with a spouse or a friend and somebody in the church is trying to advise you and counsel you, but you're like, but it's almost like it's justified because they they started it and they should have mm. called me to one side and told me. And so my anger is justified. You almost kind of try to justify yeah. your anger and justify your reaction. Um, and I think in her mind, she's probably done that. She's probably like tried to justify how she's feeling to her daughter and and ask because I can imagine you can, you can imagine that conversation with her daughter. Oh, you know this man has publicly shamed your mother. Um, you need to ask mm. for his head. You know, you need to. We need to get our own back. You know, mm. if he can do this to your mother, what what else will he do to you? Type thing. Um, yeah, I just I think, think she, anger can actually go out of control. You know, and I think it's one of those things where maybe this is bad anger, anger, right? Because we spoke about good yes, anger exactly. yesterday. Exactly. It's, it's a really nice tie in. Because sometimes it's one thing, right? You're angry, okay, maybe even justifiably. But anger is like a door, you know, it opens. And before you know it, unrelated things will, will happen. Yes, I mean, if some man came and told me you shouldn't be married to this guy, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't like it, even if I'm at fault. Mm. But you would think, okay, you'll probably just say, oh, I hate that guy. I'll try and avoid him. I won't go to places that he's going to. Mm-hmm. And it will kind of stop there, right? Or maybe even get your husband to throw him in jail or something. But to now get to the point where you want to kill him, that's a whole different thing now. So I think it, the anger just kind of, it went out of control and she just lost it. Because to kill somebody because they told you the truth, even if they didn't put it diplomatically, it's just, it's an extreme reaction. Mm-hmm. Well, do you know what I think here too? And reading between the lines, and in Matthew 14 and verse 6, mm. it's written, but at a birthday party for Herod, Herodias' daughter performed a dance that greatly pleased him. So mm. she used her daughter with the manipulation. Yes. And also prostituted her daughter. Because yes. maybe dance, she took that chance, you know. Yeah, the I never dance, thought about it. The she dance, premeditated it. Yeah, the wow. dance dance pleased him. So she prostituted her daughter to play what a man to play to play to please her husband. So does that also sh- maybe point out to us that the marriage wasn't great? She manipulated the ga- the marriage and Herod wasn't too keen on her. You never fancied the daughter or something like that. You know the way these things. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I think, I think he was just a foolish and per- man with a perverse mind. Because one, how are you going to marry your brother's wife? Right, that in itself is problematic. He mm. must have also seen something in her, and then it's not enough. I think he was a lustful character. It's not enough that you've got the mother. Now you want the younger version. Maybe she was getting a little bit old. You know, or maybe he'd had enough, and he's he's like, okay, let's let's look at the, the quote and unquote upgrade. Mm. So I just think there were two very messed up people. Yeah. Mm. So because it looks like Herod himself was a divorcee. I'm just trying to. Where did I see that online? Mm. But it looks but, like he too. Yeah, there were maybe, just two. 
No, maybe he wasn't divorced because he could have had multiple wives. Yes, he was. He was quite a senior official, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. He was an older man. So yeah. this is the thing, like, what was he doing looking at the child? You know, so I just think she probably wanted the power and everything that he had, power, I access to power and wealth. Because mm -hmm. in those days, as a woman, that was really the closest you could get to power and wealth, right? You had to go marry somebody who had it and then rule from behind the scenes. And it was, and then he, and it, and it mm -hmm. was planned. You know, right. Uh, Herodias says to the daughter, right, it's his birthday. You dance for him because I know he's yes, going to die for your you. Thing, girl. And he's going to then offer you something that whatever you want, which it's, it's written. And mm. uh, then when he says that to you, you say, give me the head of John the Baptist. Oh, my goodness. I've just had a flashback. Is this not like almost parallel to Esther? Of course. Yeah. How so? Isn't it just isn't it just the New Testament Esther? Because Esther dances for the king and he asks her. Did she? Well yeah, after after the queen after the queen he sent for the queen, didn't he? And then she said um she didn't want to because for whatever reason she thought she couldn't be summoned. And then he and then Esther comes in and he's you know, she spends all that time getting ready and then she's made queen and then doesn't the king she spends all that time trying to ask him, um, and then he asks her what what she wants. Did she make a meal or did she dance? I thought it was a no, meal. No, she didn't. Did she, did she make a meal? I, I think he she... made a meal and she invited both of them. Let's just have a look. I think it was a. She had that there was like a beauty contest. There was a beauty contest. Yes, yeah, so her beauty. But, yes, well, but like the parallel yeah. is her yeah. beauty. Yeah, but mm. Esther wouldn't dress up for it. She didn't. She didn't go into the treasury and take all the jewels and everything. She no. let her own beauty shine through. It but was a meal so she made enough. for uh, Xerxes and the other guy. Yeah, that yeah. is that food. <laughs> but she uses she uses her yes. her beauty. Yes, to her save ability. God's people. Yes, mm. whereas yes, Herodias's daughter uses her beauty to kill, to kill God's somebody. Prophet. Yes. That's the parallel I was trying to, mm. to yes. draw. She uses her beauty and her appeal to the king to save God's people whereas Herodias' daughter uses mm -hmm. it for evil and, and it's there, that yeah. and there you go too, Esther used her beauty to save Those people nation. Herod, Her, uh, Herodias' daughter uses her beauty to kill somebody mm. exactly, so and beauty Jesus, is neutral then isn't it and the beauty and in, is, yeah. uh, and the beauty in Jesus was destroyed by the Pharisees that killed him. Mm. Yeah, mm. so, yeah. Gee. I think it's interesting because then, you know how some people, I would say some people who are very conservative or religious can almost be anti-beauty because mm. they see beauty as a bad thing, right? Don't mm. wear makeup, don't do this. And I, I understand it's not always, different people have their reasons. For some people, mm -hmm. they just don't want to idolize beauty, so they'll prefer to be plain. Mm -hmm. But there are denominations where you must look a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the parallels that you guys have drawn are very good because they just make you see that beauty in itself is just... It's uh, not a bad it's a thing. thing. It's how yeah, you it's use it. Thing. It's exactly, right? You can use it. For a wonderful thing, you can use it to bring glory to God like Esther did. You can use it. I think in our modern day, how can you use beauty? Use it to bring men down. Well, you yeah, it, it happens all the time, the honey trap. Mm -hmm. So as a Christian today, as a beautiful Christian girl or woman, how can you use your beauty today as a Christian to glorify God, do you think, ladies? I think you have to be aware of, of your beauty. I think you have to be aware of the power that it has mm -hmm. um, and you have to be aware of how that power can be used for good or for evil and I think your beauty in and, in and of itself is is a thing like you said I don't think that in and of itself is a bad thing but I think you, you should be aware of the fact that if, you're, if God has made you particularly beautiful a there might be people that just pursue you because of your outside appearance, mm -hmm. even within church circles, but also be that you, you yeah, will what? Help, you I will... think, you know what, Christians make me laugh because I think some of the most visual people on this planet are Christians. Yeah, 
but also knowing that you will hold certain sway because of your like just by human psychology yes. you will hold certain mm-hmm. sway because of your physical appearance your good looks, so, yeah yeah and so you should use that you should choose to use that like yeah. esther as opposed to herodias's daughter um, yeah or just you or not even use it just the fact that you're aware that it's a thing don't yes. seek to act on it because people mm, yeah. some people know that they're they're good looking and they seek to act on it for it <laughs> yeah. no for i think so is. don't act on it for the wrong things but mm. i think in some situations like you said if you know that you can hold sway you can use it strategically and i think that's why we christians have the holy spirit mm-hmm. oh yeah I'm sorry, but there are times when like, you let the Holy Spirit let, you. Let me think of a situation. No, yeah. I'm thinking of a situation where, for example, right, you are a very good looking girl. You're sitting on this panel and there's like a budget that's to go for, I don't know, something. Uh, let me use the UK, a program like Sure Start, which was great for children. All the bad diagrams that you present in this world are not going to really sway these people because human beings make emotions make decisions based on emotions more than logic even though they think that i'm not gonna lie to you if i was a woman there and i know that this is a good program and i know that this thing is good for people and it's my beauty that is gonna make them sign that paper my beauty is coming out for a good cause absolutely (laughs) look i always say let your beauty shine from within Mm-hmm. because when we're Holy Spirit led, we are beautiful from the inside mm-hmm. out. And as an older woman, very mature woman, I do like every day to do my hair, put on a touch of makeup and have a nice outfit on. Mm-hmm. And I do that because I am a representative of the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. And I want to have my best foot forward. Mm-hmm. Like, there are loads of believers, and most of them are uh, 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 the same age bracket as me and older. And we have a phrase in Northern Ireland, and your face is as long as a Lurgan spade. And there is a place called Lurgan, and they make spades, and they make these big, long spades for digging out the uh, tr- uh, the peat, out of the peat box. Okay, mm-hmm. So it's a massive, big, long spade. So if people are doom and gloom, your face is as long as a Lurgan spade. Oh my goodness. There's lots of Christians go about mm. and they're so doom and gloom and their faces are as long as Lurgan spades. Mm. And I mm. must, when I look at them, I'm thinking, you wouldn't entice me, you wouldn't encourage me to come to Christianity if mm. you're that doom and gloom and miserable mm. and dowdy but... and everything. So we can use it. it, it some women believers, born again believers, are concerned about should I dye my hair? Should I wear makeup? Should I wear nail Please. polish? Should I wear jewelry? Now, when we're told in the scriptures not to do that, you have to look at the people that I believe anyway, you have to look at the people that they were told not to do it. There mm-hmm. were ladies of ill repute. Mm-hmm. So they were. I don't say there's anything wrong with combing your hair, styling your hair. If you want to dye it, dye it wearing a wee bit of makeup yeah. but there's going overboard even on that so i think it's, if it's like yeah. everything if we do it in moderation and it's mm. the, and the, the, the heart image. and the heart yes. with which you do it exactly the heart with which you do it, it is. I mean, you can see a lot of creativity in beauty so yeah. for example if you look at people right we're very unique and one of the ways that our uniqueness comes ac- across is through the, the choices that we make in fashion. Mm. Whether the, some people like loud hairstyles, some people like, you know, very um, conservative look. And mm. I feel like if you can express yourself that way, like God is cool with all of them. But like mm. you said, the thing with beauty where I can understand why sometimes people take a step back is that there's a fine line between just doing your thing, you know, and then becoming a victim of maybe expectations Mm -hmm. or you begin to idolize right so again like you were saying Sidoni it's very interesting to me that sometimes I've met women who are very good looking and they end up having low self-esteem yes the reason with that is because if you begin to pay too much mind to compliments that people give you of course if people say you're good looking it's fine right but there comes a point when you hear it so much 
you feel like you don't need to work on how you feel about yourself. Hmm. And then eventually when those comments are not coming, it's like the way you feel about yourself begins to fluctuate based hmm. on whether people tell you something or not. So I think even if you're going to get compliments from people, hmm. work on yourself. And also you mentioned something about beauty shining from the inside through G and that's true. There is the physical, which by all means look after yourself and don't idolize. But I think in telling you beauty is also a really wonderful thing. And maybe that's something that we can talk about because I think we live in a world where we are too caught up with what our eyes see. Yeah. Mm. And I was thinking about this yesterday. I personally feel like it's a tragedy to meet somebody who is very good looking but doesn't have good character. Yep. Hmm. It usually just yeah, yeah. Uh, like I actually just want to cry. I'm like, what are you doing with this good look? Why are you wasting them? Mm. Because eventually no matter what, right? Once people come close to you, those looks will not mean so much, you know? Yeah. I mean, there are people who were married to models and they divorce them. Day one, day two, day three, after she just becomes a normal person to you or he just mm. becomes a normal person. So I think what really lasts is the internal beauty. It takes a bit longer to see it, but when somebody is beautiful inside, ah. I don't even know how it to shines express. through. It shines it's through. Such a, and that's the thing, like it really hooks you, right? It's like I remember reading a, a magazine um, article where they, they showed these women and their husbands, right? Men whom the world would not class as very good looking. And then they were like, is she really going out with him, sort of thing? Mm. But then people were saying, look, maybe he's not like your classic oil painting. But what if he's a really great guy? He's very kind. He's very. There are people who really want those internal things. So even if the man is not super good looking, what mm. happened to all the, you know, models that she was dating? They broke her heart. Then she meets this. Why is she not going to go for him? So I think when you see all these couples who've been married for a long time, I think that's what it is. Mm. When the, the man is saying his wife is beautiful, I don't think he's just talking about her looks. Mm. I mean, at that time, she's probably great. She's got a few lines on her face which is still, I've seen many beautiful older women. But I think at that point, he's talking about the full package. Mm -hmm. And I think also as well, just with with um, Herodias' daughter, she's, I mean, we don't know how old she is, actually. Maybe um, she's like, she's young, a young woman, isn't she? So she'll probably like teens to early 20s, maybe. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find anything online. I think her name was Salome, if I'm not mistaken. I think that sounds familiar. it's a really good example of mm. how, like, just being content in life and just being content in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Because she's she's certainly not content with Philip, and I think yes. that can kind of open up. That can open up the way or the gates to so much else that happens here: anger, pride. Um, and then ultimately murder, manipulation, and then ultimately murder. She plans to kill John the Baptist, um, and and mm -hmm. but I think you know oh. sometimes just being content with where you are. Like she she been married, but she wasn't happy in her marriage. No, um, and it's just because she she was coveting power and she was a very ambitious it woman is. um yeah i think sometimes you know in marriage we we need to be content with where we are um trusting god and knowing that you know he sees the bigger picture um and trusting that and trusting ourselves almost trusting our decision that we have made the right choice because this woman obviously marries her husband then leaves the husband for the brother um and perhaps mm -hmm. the daughter that she's prostituting to Herod is actually Philip's daughter we're not told whose daughter it is yeah it must well it probably is because they say her daughter I right. think if it was his daughter he would have had to be a very sick man to watch his daughter it's saying here that she was about between 12 and 14 yeah okay. so that's a child mm, really that is. but yeah. yes a, a child to us but remember, but in those, in those yeah, days, in old they were Roman times, by, 13. by then, yeah, because yes. wasn't Mary, oh, wasn't Mary young but as he well. Was, what? He was forty-nine, according to what I'm reading here. 
Yeah. Yeah, but Mary yeah. as well was quite young when she was when she was pregnant. Yeah, yeah when she was things like this. When he was Esther was anyway, like older men used to marry young women back in yeah. the day. So maybe he was looking and thinking, who she could be yeah. in my hurry. But I think all this just comes from her discontent and her covetousness and just being unhappy in her marriage. She ends mm -hmm. up committing adultery, prostituting her daughter, manipulating everybody like emotionally, the pride, the anger, the murder, like all of this could have stopped if she had just I've I've had the song in my head all week, God creating me a pure heart. Like if that's our prayer mm. every day, just creating me a pure heart and a clean heart, some versions say, Psalm um 51. Psalm 51, yeah. I think if that's our prayer every day, then we come to God humble and we lay our desires before him. And I think we almost need to do that in, in every situation and just ask God every day or every moment we get to create in me a clean heart. I think, you know, I've had this, maybe God knows something in my heart that I'm not entirely aware of, but I've had the psalm in my head all week and it's just created me a clean heart. Um. And just let me seek your truths, those deep truths that are in God. Let's all endeavor to seek that because I think if we can sort of nip this in the bud, because this woman's story is not, it's not, like I know it sounds outrageous when we're reading it in black and white, but it's not far from our realities. It's not far from people that we know, our neighbors, our friends, you know, how many times do you speak to a a couple or a friend who's married and, and they tell you of a particular discontent in their marriage or you know we, we speak to people and they're not happy and they're looking out there for perhaps what they should be looking for when they should just mm. bury their head and work on their marriage but they're too busy looking outside um, and then they end up in all sorts of situations yeah, I'm not advocating for you know people to stay in abusive marriages because that's far from it you know if it's if it's abusive you know, you need to look after yourself and, and get out. Um, but if it's just discontent and just this ambition and this wanting more, because I think, like, I feel like in today's society, everybody wants more. Nobody's happy to just be happy. Like, everybody wants everything brand new, shiny. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like you don't get, you don't get to shiny in a day. Like, you have to put in the work you don't get to marvelous in a day you have to put in the work and sometimes the work is hard it's hard work it's it's good ground yeah. it, it will you know skin you peel you mash you boil you and do you all sorts of ways before you get there but sometimes society and, and social media and media is telling you if it's not brand new spanking shiny you should want more you know, if he's not, yeah. if he's not buying you flowers every day, you want you should want more. If if he's not taking you to a restaurant every weekend, you should want more. If he's not taking you on a holiday every month, you should want more. Um, and I think sometimes we we can lose our way, especially well, especially women. But this is because it's primarily women we're speaking to at the minute, and our group is a women's group. But you know, I think we need to mm. guard our hearts from from the Herodias's seeds of discontent um, because, yes. you know, your spouse is human. Yep. Your spouse is fallible. Your spouse is not God. Your spouse is not perfect. Your spouse will make mistakes. Um, and so be content. And, and, and the best thing you can do for them is, is lift them up in prayer. Yes. Rather than looking outward lift them up in prayer um and god god can work miracles like he turns situations around like the amount of women that i speak to and they're like oh my god i can't believe like this man has just changed like overnight and i'm like it's not overnight though since you've been praying for six years <laughs> but when god does the miracle it does seem like overnight you just become so joyous that you just feel like it happened overnight but we're like yeah. girlfriend it didn't happen yeah. overnight <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. um but yeah. i think there's a real lesson here as well just just because that sometimes i think maybe sometimes i can get overlooked so there's a real lesson here for married women to be mm -hmm. content 
Be content with what you have. Be content with whom you have. The Bible says, you know, the wife of your youth, treat the wife of your youth well. That's obviously speaking to the men. But I think there's a lesson here for women yes. to be content mm -hmm. with their husbands. Don't go looking at his brother, for heaven's sake. Don't go looking anywhere, but even if you no, are, don't look at his brother. Any man. No, no, no. But it's true because no. you know what? Yeah. People, people can do that sometimes. People can compare their partners to other people. Yeah. Mm. And I have to say, I'm not married, so I'm going to look at it from an even wider point of view. This can even happen between parents and children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yes. parents will control will compare their children to other people's children. Yes. Mm. Or even compare siblings. I think you have to be very careful when you mm. do that because if you go back again to say husband or even children, especially if people know that you're comparing them to somebody else, mm. they'll just switch up. If you're yes. saying to your husband, or why can't you be like John? He just got a promotion. Rather than that. You don't know what John's wife is going through in the house. Mm -hmm. She's just not coming out there with her own issues, right? Mm, exactly. Or if you're looking at your friend and you're thinking that they're better than you, you don't mm. know, like contentment is something that is worth praying for. Mm. It's a soul worth praying for because mm. you're right. In this day and age, we take things for granted so easily we don't to put it in that kind of new modern day parlance we need to practice gratitude mm. yes nobody is saying gratitude. So. we need to practice grace i feel like grace yeah i feel like this this whole cancel culture is is yeah. a thing yeah, i feel like there's room for both to be honest because sometimes just to be happy with what you have it mm. doesn't mean that being happy with what you have just keeps you stuck in one place and you can't reach out for more. For example, let's say you've got an education. Okay, you've got your degree, you're doing your thing. There comes a point when the discontent is legitimate. It's just that you've come to a place where you're not being challenged anymore, right? Mm. And then you can think, okay, I'll go and study for my master's or I'll apply for another job that challenges me. That's very legitimate discontent because human beings have to grow. Mm. The same how, even sometimes with a partner, let's say your partner is doing something that isn't right. Mm. and you you have every right to feel like okay this situation isn't working for me but rather than saying okay look at your friend or whatever how about having that conversation mm. how about just saying okay this is quite not quite working what can we do because some people genuinely don't even know that what they're doing to you is wrong mm. yeah. and if you bring it to their attention this has happened to me and someone and when I brought it to their attention they were like oh my goodness I didn't know and that was sorted and it's mm. never happened again so sometimes simple communication, mm -hmm. sometimes you need to even help people to come to that place of awareness. So, yeah, I feel like, like you said, we need to give people grace by realizing that they don't always know mm. and even suggest ways. Because some people even know, but they don't have the tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. also just looking at that discontent, if we're going by Exam 51, one of the beautiful things about the Psalms was that David was always very honest in his prayers. Mm. And sometimes just going to God and being very honest and saying, look, this is how I'm really feeling. And I know it's wrong. Hey, yeah. why am I even feeling like this? Because you know what? I don't know about other people, but sometimes I feel a certain way and I don't even know why I'm feeling like this. Mm. And you have to say to God, what is, because God might say to you, you know what? Your real problem is that you've outgrown that job. Mm. So you need to start looking for another one rather than envying your friend who is doing very well in her career. Mm. and then you ask for him to create in you a, a clean yes. heart so you say to him then oh i'm really sorry is was that the case okay mm. let me you begin to the fact the fact that you're even thinking okay you know what i'm going mm. to go now and do something else you become like the energy that you put into doing that new thing mm. will just take away those thoughts so yeah. i think it's good to examine why we are discontented Take it to God. That's the best therapist. He'll tell you why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Give yeah. you direction. Or even talk to friends. If you have people that you can speak to honestly, mm. I think in this Christian journey, right, this is why God has given us each other. I know it's not always easy to talk to everybody, but if you have that friend that you can be sincere with or mm. your pastor or whoever and say, I'm feeling this way because of X, Y, and Z. Mm. Sometimes God will not talk to you. He will use somebody. And they might be the one to open your eyes to see, but you're feeling this way. But have you ever thought that you have, you know, a good family, a lovely home? And they'll remind you of the good things that you have. And that can really be helpful. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I also feel like 
there's a lesson here as well. I mean, just briefly before we say goodnight is trust your pa your pastor. Like if you're in a good church and a good God-fearing church with good pastors and your pastor mm -hmm. approaches something that they see as sinful behavior, then don't don't mm -hmm. have her heart, don't have Herodias' heart because her heart was was instinctively anger and pride. How dare you yes. talk to me like this? How dare you call me out? How dare you this? Um, but I think if you're in a church and your shepherd, who's your pastor, mm -hmm. is guiding you down a particular path or has noticed something and brought it to your attention, then trust, mm -hmm. trust the approach. And rather than yes. have that reaction, um, yes. have one of humility and an acceptance and remorse and take it to God in prayer and he will undoubtedly help you. But yeah, no, it's been a wonderful Absolutely. conversation. It's totally, totally. And I think Herodias had a guilty conscience. That's why she acted the way she acted. Yeah. Guilt can make you do crazy things because mm. you become defensive. Mm. But no, thank you, ladies. It's been wonderful. Yes, thank you. Yeah, time's, time's gone. Should we pray before we say goodnight? Sure. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the lessons learned today. We thank you for the example of how not to be um, for Herodias and her daughter. We ask, Lord, that you would create in us clean hearts and pure hearts. Help us to be those that seek to walk in your way and your will always. Um, and when we are reproached either by your word or by our pastors or by our fellow brothers and sisters, help us, Lord, to be humble enough to take it on and to lift ourselves up to you in prayer trusting always that the holy spirit would help us lord we um, can sometimes read these stories and feel like they're so far removed from our reality but when we look at our lives today and the lives of people we know we know that this is so close to home um, and really it's only one decision away we're only ever one choice away like giselle said we all have a choice but we um, actually realize that we're only ever one bad choice away from behaving the way some of these people behaved in, in these stories that we read. And so, Lord, we ask that you would guide our choices. Help us, Lord, to always make the choices that align to your will for us and your way. Um, we know, Lord, that they're not so evil and they're not so bad because that is, by very nature, who we are as human beings. We are sinful people. It is by your grace and the Holy Spirit that we're able to live lives that can reflect something of your glory. We ask that you would be with each and every one of us and continue to enable us until next week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. And good night. Good, good night, night, ladies. Thank you. Good night, night. night. everyone. Bye. Um, oh, my Zoom.